Bridget Hendricks. Welcome to Nature of Reality Radio. Sorry about the clearing out of the throat there at the end. Uh, heard about you at Karma Fest. Got your business card. Like I said in the show intro, um, I lost the business card and the, um, the website that you sent out the link to, um, for whatever reason, I can't access it. I hope that's not a problem at your end, but if it is, I'm glad I was able to tell you about that in the show intro. So people after this, listening to this, will be able to access your site because you said you got wanted to get that up because a lot of the Karma Fest people were asking you if you had a website and you wanted to, um, I guess, join the club, if you will, for, and make your own site. So kudos to you for doing that. Um Please introduce yourself from a primary source perspective. You've got the floor and let the uh, angels and guides be with us. We've got a solar eclipse, an annular eclipse, I believe it is, where you can see the ring, but not the full corona of the sun. Uh, solar eclipses mean a lot to me. I'll try to be seeing the one in Carbondale, Illinois, um, on April 8th, 2024. And um, to make up for the one in 2017, which I went to see Charleston, but couldn't because of cloud cover, unfortunately. But this oh. is the big enchilada eclipse. One in 2024, and this one is just a stepping stone to that um, for whatever we're in store for. But I'm digressing and babbling. You got the floor now. Introduce yourself from a primary source perspective. Who is Bridget Hendricks? What did she discover that causes her to do the stuff that she does? Um, and then uh, we'll get into some nitty gritty science and metaphysics um, questions. You got the floor. All right. Well, first of all, thank you for um, asking me to come on. Um, again, my name is Bridget Hendricks. Um, I'm a psychic medium and spiritual teacher. Um, you know, as a kid, I was very connected to source as are most children. I was told I had imaginary friends. Um, I do recall seeing a spirit at one time when I was a child um, and having always talked to myself and answered the dialogue in my head. So I've always felt very connected to spirit. Um, I just thought all of that that was happening um, was just normal um, until I was, you know, taught that it wasn't. And uh, so spirit has always come through um, to me, like with all of the Claire's, clairvoyance, clairaudience, et cetera, as well as my dreams. Um, I just stopped sharing a lot of what I was getting with my family since it was kind of discouraged and not to talk about Um and then as a teenager, you know, I would dream about things and then they would happen. Um, I had lots of synchronicities, um, like I would think about someone and they'd call me or think about something and it would happen, um, dreaming about things um, and then them playing out. For example, I had a really vivid dream about my best friend. Um, and then the next day, you know, she was dressed exactly like I saw her in the dream. Um, I've also had some dreams that aren't... Um, aren't as easy. Um, I remember dreaming about, you know, my younger brother's death and it was very vivid and very intense and um, very overwhelming. Um, and then it wasn't, you know, long after until unfortunately that come to be true, um, which was a really hard thing to have in kind of my late, um, you know, like uh, my early adult um, life. Um, so, you know, I, like a lot of adults, you know, I just got, got busy with everyday life, raising kids, working. Um, but I've always had that connection. And um, I really didn't realize that I was psychic or a medium, um, even though I have found out since that other family members have some of these abilities too. I think it was in the mid 90s that I started reading and studying about metaphysical things. Um, and then I was able to put it together that I had psychic tendencies. Um, funny enough, I didn't think I was a medium, even though I would feel spirits that passed from this world. Um, these were usually people that I knew, and they would usually come through and just visit me on their transition out of um, form. Um, as well as a few that hadn't crossed over, I would be able to feel their presence in rooms. Um, I never really felt afraid of these spirits um, because I just knew you could ask them to leave. Um, I just had that knowing. Um, and ex other examples of me experiencing, um, you know, spirits. Um, one morning, I'm kind of in that sleep where you don't really want to get up, but you're awake and you're just kind of laying there. Uh, and all of a sudden, I felt this presence walk up to the bed. And I smelt coffee and I thought, oh, great. You know, my boyfriend has brought me coffee. Uh, how nice of him. Um, and so I was like, okay, fine. I'm just going to go ahead and get up. And when I opened my eyes, there was no one there and no coffee. 
um, which was very baffling. Um, and then I got up and he wasn't even in the house. So um, I then knew that that was definitely spirit. Um, and that's just another one of the clairs. Sometimes you do get some smells that come through that are um, not there or no justification for them. Um, other experiences I've had um, as far as with dreams is uh, my grandfather who had was passed and my father had a dream and my grandfather was telling me to uh, that he needed me to go into the store and get the milk from the blue container. And I'm like, okay. And my dad was there, they were talking. And I told my grandpa, because my dad wanted me to do something. And I can't remember what it was in the dream. But my grandfather said, I need you to really do this. And I'm like, okay, but it's just going to take a while. But I promise I'll do it. So the next day um, in waking world, I'm walking with my friend and we were on vacation and we're using up the foreign money that we have. And this young boy is following us around asking us to buy something. And we try to give him money and he won't take the money. He wants us to come with him to buy something. Uh, we go in store after store after store. And this boy is just waiting outside each one of them. Um, and finally, I just asked him, I said, what is it that you want us to buy? And we go around to this little stand and he points at the shelf and he said, I want that milk in the blue box. Every part of me just got super still. And I remembered in a flash that dream that my grandfather had told me. Um, you know, again, I, I as Bridget don't understand why I was supposed to do this, um, but I did it. And luckily my friend and I had just enough money because we were trying to use up the money, but we had enough to buy this um, for this young boy to have milk for his little sister for, for a few months. Um, so it's really good that, you know, when I do listen to spirit, um, I hopefully that's why I listen to spirit um, so that I can be helpful and do what they need me to do. Um, another situation, um, you know, again, I mentioned my brother, but before he passed, um, you know, I had gotten off of work and was planning on going home. And next thing I know, we've all been driving and we all probably know this, um, feeling where you kind of have come over and you're kind of almost just driving and wrote, you know, just without thinking. Um, and next thing I know, I'm going towards my mom's and I'm like, oh, I wasn't planning on going. Um, but I thought, oh, well, I'm already halfway there. I might as well just go. And so I'm at my mom's and it was really bizarre because I felt like somebody looking in a window and watching them, even though I'm standing in the house with them, I felt like an outsider looking in. And um, I'm watching them have a conversation and I kind of get to have a little bit of interaction, but not a lot um, with them. And um, anyways, short story, that was the last time I got to see my brother alive. Um, so spirit led me there to, um, you know, to have that. Um, so, um, so, you know, at some point I did realize that the things happening to me made me a psychic medium. Um, and so then I, I kind of took a little bit deeper dive and I started using like tarot cards and, um, and then just developing uh, the skills to, to enhance the communication as well as learning to trust my intuition and follow the guidance um, from my guides and angels. Um, interesting enough, you mentioned Karma Fest. They told me to go. Um, I had not done readings before, and that's what they told me to do. And again, I've learned um, over time when they asked me to do something that I'm supposed to do it. Um, so I did do readings um, at Karma Fest. Um, I did um, a psychic medium reading where I basically connect with relatives or ancestors in the spirit world. Um, the other one I did was animal communications, um, where I can either talk to, you know, living um you know, pets or animals or even deceased um, ones that have passed. Um, they asked me to do past life review. Um, and that is one where I, um, I'm i guided by one or two of your guides to, your, to the Akashic records. And then they show me the past lives that are relevant to you today. So that way it's something you can relate to, but it also... Um, benefits you in this lifetime to know that tendency. 
Um, I did not do these readings at Karma Fest, uh, not the first one, but the second one they had asked me to add guides and angels. Um, and I did um, basically do um, that one at the second Karma Fest. And that's just where I connect with either your guides or angels just to receive what messages they have for you. Um, at that second Karma Fest, uh, my guides also asked me to teach a class. Um, so they asked me to teach Spiritual 101. And that class is all about getting grounded, clearing your energetic body, and connecting with your body's wisdom. Um, that one is really important um, if you, for everybody. We all are energetic beings, and I really think it's, it's crucial that we all learn um, how to um, manage our energy. Um, another class that I was asked to be teaching is manifesting. Um, this is just personalized to each individual with tips on how they can consciously bring about what they want into this world. I'll be starting a basic meditation um, November 4th through the 15th. It's um, two 30-minute personalized sessions a week, and this is where you learn how to connect with spiritual essence and you quieten the mind so that your soul can speak. Um, I also am hoping and planning on attending the Karma Fest that is coming up uh, December 16th and 17th, um, and that would be in person. Um, I thought it might be interesting to people to know kind of what it feels like for me um, to be a psychic medium. So being an empath and psychic medium for me um, shows up in different ways. It depends on what message um, they need to come through. They often use uh, sensations in my body to describe health conditions. An example um, would be me feeling like a tightness in my chest or feeling like I can't breathe. Um, they use my body to help get the message to the sitter. I also receive feelings. Um, and uh, as I have a dialogue going on in my head, like most people do, I sometimes get like a quick something that pops in, um, you know, a word or a quick, you know, message uh, or an image. And um, usually these just keep playing in my head until I either say what needs to be said um, if it's for me, they'll do it. Um, they don't always replay it over and over. If it's a sitting, it definitely replays until I can get the message through. And we keep going until we can get to that understanding for the sitter, hopefully. Um, being a medium, um, you stay with it until you get the message relayed, basically. Um, even if the sitter doesn't relate or understand the message until later, uh, my job basically is to bridge that connection between the spirit world and the sitter. Um, and that's pretty much what I have been asked to do is to, um, you know, help people with healing. Um, so I think a lot of my psychic uh, mediumship helps with healing um, people um, as well as just getting closure um, and messages um, that they need um, or guidance. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's who I am, or, or the biggest aspect of who I am and day to day, yes, job, all that other fun stuff. But this is, this is the core of, of who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, Karma Fest. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty nice experience for me. I'm definitely going to go again. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the one in September. But the money that I paid for that, I'm able to use for a future one. So I'll probably be going to the one in Harvard de Grace, Maryland, birthplace of Cal Ripon Jr., um, mm -hmm. to uh, the one that's on September 22nd and 23rd of the next year. The one in uh, December that you're going to, um, thought about going to that, but then I kind of remembered I crossed that off my list of days that I'd be taking off from my job at Whole Foods, which is a dishwasher, very spiritual mm -hmm. job. I <laughs> I like oh, it, it is a very spiritual job every job is spiritual <laughs> yes well it's, it's funny you say that because you you say you actually work um a job um mm -hmm. and then again um 
but, but what, so many people uh, try to say, uh, try to get out of the matrix, stop working, find a way to make money other way. Well, how do you guys make money? Do you sell drugs and live off welfare? Uh, well, I, I shouldn't ask people, what do they do for a living? It's kind of inappropriate. But uh, mm -hmm. then again, um, with you, um, you, you say you work. Um, is uh, uh, oh, Maybe it's inappropriate for me to ask you this, but why you have the ability to be a psychic, why not try to make money out of your profession? Or you just have a feeling that, no, 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 the, the stuff I do is kind of unverifiable, even though I believe it to be real and I know it's real. I don't think it's right for me to make money off something that's unverifiable. So that's why you have a job and haven't made profit out of this. Is that a fair question? Uh, that's a fair question. Um, so I would say that I... I think working is something that I, you know, just did um, for the longest amount of time. And of course, yes, I have to, you know, we all have bills and et cetera. Um, I'm not opposed if that's where spirit leads me to doing this full time and making money um, to do it, um, then I will do that. Um, it's just, you know, right now that job pays the bill. Uh, the other aspect is the way I, I approach life is um, I'm helping people anyways, uh, by just showing up and being um, who I am, and which is, I just try to work from a loving place and show kindness and support. Um, and that is actually my real job is I am a, in a supportive role uh, to people. And I've been often been described in that role as being the heart of the department. Um, so my understanding is I, you know, yes, I'm making money there and yes, it is a regular job and it's not so much tied, but everything is spiritual. I've really touched the lives of the people that I've encountered um, through regular jobs. Um, I've helped people come into my office. They have a joke. If we sit down in this chair, be prepared to tell Bridget everything. Um, and so, but they've given me their hard stuff and we've been able to talk it through. So I've done the mentoring um, and I had a, some one person tell me the only difference um, in this person is the fact that you were in the picture this time. They had had the same thing play out pri previously. Um, and then this time, um, you know, because you were there to help talk them through and then to heal and to look at aspects of themselves and to maybe look at things differently. Um, so I think I bring the spirituality in everything that I do. Um, but if spirit guide God, you know, creator source, all of those, if they, if so be it, I will do what they ask me to do. If, um, I usually check in with them. Um, I don't always think I'm ready for things, but they know where I'm at and they know what I'm capable of. And I'm, I'm definitely open to going full-time and doing this. It is extremely rewarding, um, to be a psychic medium, um, and to do spiritual teaching. Um, my heart, and soul and pa it's, it's passion for me. It's pure joy. Um, it's not easy work. It's not easy by any means. I get hard things that come to me and I have to help people and their emotions and being an empath. Um, I feel all of that. And um, so again, that kind of goes back to, you know, I mean, teaching myself as well as others who do do this self-care um, and et cetera. So um, I think everything I do is spiritual, if that answers your question, because <laughs> I approach it that way. Well, if you're guided, then by all means, follow the guides. Mm -hmm. um, so these um, entities that you've had um, contact with, is it appropriate to say they're you? I mean, <laughs> There are people that will say everything you perceive in life or see in life or hear in life or use any of your senses to detect in life is you because you're just a smaller fractal of the greater fractal. Um, but then again, there are others that say you is not the perfect um, pronoun to be uh, mm. to be using to describe what these entities or things that you run into in life are. Um they came into your life because of a soul contract you made at some point. Um, so it was bound to happen. So there's no such thing as a true abdu alien abduction because those aliens are part of your, your soul contract you agreed to have happen to you. 
Same thing with the guides that, I mean, the people or the entities or whatever that, that you run into, I, mean, I guess you can call them guides, seeing how they may guide your life and also, but anyhow, um, do you, um, how do you, do you perceive these beings and entities that you run into as a part of you? And if not, um, is there a reason why you would not want to look at it that way? Um, I think I, I get what you're asking. And I think it's, there's a twofold to that. Um, because there's, there's Bridget who's in a human form and she says these are completely um, not part of her. Um, but the spiritual part of me knows that we are all one and we're all connected. So it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think um, for me as Bridget and as in this form and being psychic medium and having limitations down here, um, I feel them as, as separate um, and I need to feel them as separate in order to be able to, to share the guidance um, because I think um, if it all feels like me, then I'm not going to be able to differentiate. Um, but I also know in the bigger scheme of things that there's so much more going on in this world um, and outside of this world. And a lot of the connections that I connect with um, are not always um, just your ancestors and relatives. Um, I've, you know, had contact, you know, with angels and, and different uh, other, what we would just say, use the word entities. Um, so, but I, I think because we're so, um, creator source is so vast um, that sometimes if you want to use the human body in comparison, the foot doesn't always know what the hand is doing. Um, and that's where I feel like we differ um, and think and see it. The foot just knows what the foot is doing. It's having its own, um, but source would be the, you know, the all knowing and knows what the whole body is doing. Um, so in one aspect, I'm just, you know, one part of source. Um, so I don't feel that, that wholeness. Now, when I meditate, there's, there is some types where I do feel um, that, that connection, but in a human form, there's no way I can feel it um, in the full capacity that it is, that are these, these bodies just don't allow that. Thank you for giving your take on that. Um, at this point, I guess it'll uh, raise this into a pay-per-view only. Uh, Patreon uh, subscribers, uh, you'll be able to listen to this. Those of you who aren't, please consider subscribing to Patreon so that um, not only I can make a little extra profit from this time, a great challenge, but you can get access to valuable information and stuff that's worth uh, listening to and digesting. So with, um, with that being said, uh, 